Some breaking news coming out this morning on this Monday morning, November 13th. Zach Arnett has been fired by Mississippi State. Not much of, of a surprise for Mississippi State folks that Zach Arnett's being let go after Mississippi State dropped a 51-10 to ball game to Texas A&M. But comes on a Monday morning, Mississippi State drops this news about 7.45 and dropping my daughter off at school when this happens. Uh, but nonetheless, we have a, a resolution to the Zach Arnett issue that has happened. It's really a tough, tough deal um, how all this played out. The last year has been really difficult for Mississippi State football, um, and we'll start at the beginning. Mississippi State knocked off Ole Miss on Thanksgiving night, 2022. Uh, it took the team to eight wins, and excitement started to build for Mississippi State moving into 2023. People were really getting excited about the Bulldogs. They were going to play in Tampa for a bowl game, um, going to return a lot of players. Everything was going good for Mike Leach and his program. They start preparation for, for bowl prep, and Mike Leach um, has a hard episode transported to the hospital in Jackson, um, and the result of that was ultimately the legendary coach passing away in the middle of bowl camp. And Mississippi State had to make a decision quickly. And Mark Keenum was in place with interim athletic director Bracky Brett. If you remember, Mississippi State did not have a sitting athletic director. Uh, Bracky Brett was sitting in there after John Cohen had left for Auburn. And they had to make a decision quickly. And the best possible thing they could come up with at that time was to allow Zach Arnett to step in as head coach. He was serving as interim head coach for the bowl game. And it was just a really tough situation. It was a deal where you start weighing out your options there. And if you move on from uh, Zach Arnett or you try to go get your new head coach, you have that coaching search that's got to go down. You have the bowl game coming up. A signing class had to be signed in, in a week. You got to get into the transfer portal. You got to calm everybody down in that roster. And, you know, what they thought was best was keeping that camaraderie, keeping that consistency with Zach Arnett as head coach. Turns out that was the, the probably the wrong um, situation there. But at the time, it, it felt like to a lot of us that it was the way to go to keep everything together and see what happens. The good news for Mississippi State, I, I think that Mark Keenum handled this correctly. Um, you signed Zach Arnett to a contract that was uh, very easy to navigate around if things went south, and that's exactly what happened. And now you have a contract, I think it's got a $1.5 $1 million buyout or something like that. Um, and he was one of, if not the lowest paid coaches in the SEC. So Mississippi State is not going to be financially set back with this decision. I think that they're going to be able to uh, move on fairly easily, be able to uh, offer someone a uh, substantial contract, I think, and, and all that. So, uh, you know, this, is a, this isn't a situation where Mississippi State is going to be significantly set back. You know, Texas A&M fires Jimbo Fisher and has to pay him $76 million. So they're going to be able to survive that because of the old money that they have there in Texas A&M, but at the same time, um, that's a substantial number, and Mississippi State's not facing that. So um, this was this was bound to happen. Things were going south quickly. Recruiting is bad for Mississippi State. Um, there's a lot of organizational things behind the scenes that are really bad for Mississippi State right now. This is not a surprise. Um, this is something that was coming. Something we were hearing was in the works for the last couple of couple of weeks. Brian Haydad and myself told you something was up four weeks ago. Four or five weeks ago, there's a, a hot seat article coming out by Andy Staples. Another one comes out. That stuff is not coincidence. That stuff coming out in a guy's first year is not coincidence. They knew something was up, and that's exactly what happens a few weeks later. Mississippi State fires Zach Arnett. And, you know, I, I don't really – know where it went wrong. I, I think ultimately Zach Arnett was not ready for this position. I think that's that's the uh, main takeaway for me is Zach Arnett just was not prepared to take on an SEC job. And who would expect him to be at this point? Th this was not supposed to be how it went for him. It was supposed to be a gradual step up for him. It wasn't supposed to be jump from defensive coordinator after uh, you know four or five years, whatever it was to being a head coach in the SEC. That's, 
that's a difficult step to take, and we found that out. But it all seemed like it was uh, pretty good early on. Zach Barnett finished up the recruiting class. They only lost one player out of the recruiting class, and they lost um, two players out of the transfer portal, Rara Thomas and Dylan Johnson. But both of those players were gone before Arnett was hired. So, um, you know, recruiting looked good. He brought in uh, a few four star, a couple of four stars late in the process and signed Mississippi State signing class at a top 25 class. Uh, went to the transfer portal and got some guys. It looked like everything was good. They kept most of the roster. And, you know, the summer they got some momentum in recruiting, got a few four-star commitments. But when the games were played, things just really started going south. And you could see it uh, started with the Arizona game. And now that game looks like a pretty big win. You got a top 25 win there. But at the time, it it looked kind of discombobulated. Mississippi State didn't take advantage of five turnovers in the first half, and things unraveled for them. They almost dropped that ball game. Then you have the LSU game, and then you have the Alabama game, South Carolina. First half of the schedule was bad. They had a chance to turn it around the second half, and even in the game that they won against Arkansas, just looked really bad. So it was, uh, it was heading down this path, and it really culminated with just a disastrous, embarrassing performance on Saturday night against a Texas A&M team that would end up firing its coach after beating Mississippi State 51-10. to That has got to be one of the most demoralizing things that can possibly happen. You lose a ball game 51-10 to and the coach that beats you is immediately fired. Which, by the way, I don't know when it's ever happened where two coaches were fired a day or two after a ball game. Head coaches of both teams fired in the middle of the season after that ball game. That's unprecedented. Uh, we're seeing a lot of unprecedented things here. So Texas A&M giving this guy a seventy-six million dollar buyout. Mississippi State firing a coach after you know not even one full season. Two coaches being fired in the same game. Just uh, a lot of uh, wild things going on here in uh, college football and, and especially in the SEC. But this is what college athletics is now. It's, you know, there are no rules. All bets are off. And in the SEC, no one is safe. Zach Arnett was not safe. And this administration had, didn't have that much faith in him or they wouldn't have given him this kind of contract that they can navigate themselves out of after one year. That This was simply a uh, wait-and-see season that were going to allow him to keep the roster together, keep things together here and move on from them if they have to. That's, that's obviously what happened here. And now Mississippi State is in search, more for, search, search mode for a head coach, which I've been told has been happening now for two or three weeks. Mississippi State has been behind the scenes. Zach Selman trying to, uh, you know, kind of beat the bushes a little bit for the next head coach. So who does Mississippi State hire is now the question. And this has been a conversation that's been going on now for several weeks. I mean, people have been expecting this to happen for a while now. So names have been popping up left and right. The first name that really came up was Tom Herman at uh, Florida Atlantic. That's kind of cooled a little bit. Herman has not been as successful as the latter part of the season has gone on. But Herman also took over a terrible uh, spot there. Willie Taggart came in and just blew that thing up. Um, just as he has in several places at this point. So I don't know if you can justly judge Tom Herman at this point. I don't know, you know, how successful he would be in the SEC, but uh, he's certainly a name of interest. He wouldn't be my first call. I think there's a lot of other guys that you should look at first. And uh, first, let's clarify what Mississippi State probably needs in this situation in the type of pond that they're going to be fishing in. Uh, I want to make it clear, it's going to be incredibly hard for Mississippi State to hire a sitting Power 5 head coach. Um, That's hard for anybody to do in the SEC, but especially for Mississippi State. There's certain teams that can do it. I think Alabama can do it. Texas A&M can do it. Tennessee uh, can do it. But even they haven't been hiring sitting Power 5 head coaches. Um, You know, Auburn, I mean, I know Hugh Freeze is a Power 5 coach and has been, but he was at Liberty. So it's, it's not easy. Ole Miss hired Lane Kiffin from Florida Atlantic, and that was a, a little bit of a risk because nobody was willing to take a chance on him again. Um, and, you know, I guess you have LSU that can do it. 
there's about three or four teams that could go pluck some good Power 5 coaches. Texas A&M is going to do that. Mississippi State is not fishing in that pond. Mississippi State is not a, a program that can go out and go get coaches that are at sustainable programs that are winning. That, that's just not going to happen uh, in the Power 5. So I think you narrow your gaze at group of five head coaches. And that's, that's kind of where I am. I think it needs to be a head coach. I don't think you need to be taking any chances anymore on offensive and defensive coordinators. I think Mississippi State in their list of uh, pool candidates need to be head coaches. Um, there might be one or two offensive coordinators on your list, and you need a big list uh, because you need to be able to keep your options open. But for the most part, this needs to be a head coach that can come in, that knows how to run a program, and has had this experience coaching football and running a program. Because you can't take a chance on somebody that has no idea what they're doing. Uh, I think it's got to be a guy that is running his own program. And to me, uh, the guy that I like uh, maybe more than anybody right now is G.J. Kinney from Texas State. Um, six and three this year, but this is a guy that's really exciting. He turned most of his roster over out of the transfer portal, which is something that I think Mississippi State is going to need to do. Not turn the whole roster over, but this is a team that's going to need 20 to 25 transfers. Um, the roster's got to have an overhaul. You're losing a lot of players. You need impact guys on the defensive line, possibly on the offensive line as well. Quarter, you need a legit quarterback. You need a couple of skill guys, defensive backs. This roster has got to have some change in it. And, um, you know, a guy like G.J. Kenny, I think you – I talked about not taking too much of a chance. I think you can afford taking a chance on a head coach, on a guy that's been a head coach, taking a chance on, a, on someone that hasn't been on this level. Um, that can bring excitement, has an exciting offense. I like G.J. Kenny a lot. He's 6-4 and four this year and 3-3 three and three in their conference, but he has a win over Baylor, was in a, a, a good game against uh, Texas San Antonio, uh, blew out Southern Miss, which, I mean, that's not really impressive at this point, but it is what it is. Um, they did lose to Troy, which I, I like John Summerall too. I know a lot of people don't, but I do like John Summerall. Um, he would be on my list as well. Um, and then lost last week to Jamie Chadwell. And, um, well, no, Jamie Chadwell's at Liberty, I'm sorry. Uh, lost to Coastal Carolina. Um, but that's another guy I would, I would talk to, Jamie Chadwell. I, it's going to be tough, but he's got a pretty large buyout, I think. And he might not be ready to take a jump to Mississippi State. Uh, he could be a guy that's kind of like um, uh, what Billy Napier did, where he might wait it out a little bit for a bigger job. But... I would call him, certainly. He's done an excellent job at um, uh, Coastal Carolina and Liberty. Um, I was going to pull up his resume. He has been um, he's been really good, and he's kept things rolling at Liberty. But they're 9-0 and right now. And when he was at um, – he started at North Greenville in Division Two. They went 22-14, and started 2-8. and then won nine games and 11 games in uh, his next two years. He was actually at Delta State in 2012. They went three and seven. And then he went to Charleston Southern in 2013, won 10 games in year one, two 10-win seasons in four years, three eight-win seasons in his five years, 35 and 14. Get his first uh, job at Coastal Carolina in 2017 and went three and nine. And then it was five and seven in 2019, 2020, 11 and one, 2021, 11 and two, 2022, nine and three, and went 39, 22. And then last year, and then this year's nine and oh with Liberty. He's been great. So he, I, I would definitely call him. I think that's a little bit of a pipe dream just because, like I said, he's getting paid a lot of money at Liberty, but he would definitely be on my list. Um, there's no doubt about it. Um, and then, you know, Tom Herman's on there, I think. Jeff Trailer at UT San Antonio. These are the type of coaches that Mississippi State could win big with, I think. These guys that are winning, that are very successful with these uh, group of five teams. Jamie Chadwell and Jeff Trailers would be, I think, monster hires for Mississippi State to be able to pull from there. They've proven it so far. Jeff Trailer 
has uh, really done a good job at uh, UT San Antonio. Pull his up. Trailer was a guy, you know, you can you remember him. He was at Texas. Um, was a good recruiter there. Was also at Arkansas. And he's been at UT San Antonio the last four years. And seven and five his first year, but he's got a chance to win ten games or more for the third straight season. They've been solid again this year. And they lose to they lost to Houston. Army and Tennessee, but they've since they've since come back. They lost. They were one and three to start the season. They've won six straight. So they've. I mean, they've really turned it up since they've gotten into conference play. They're they got a chance to win their conference. Probably going to win ten games this year. They got Tulane at the end of the schedule, which is going to be a big one. But um, I love Jeff Trailer too. So. These are the kind of guys that Mississippi State needs to get. And, I, you know, Zach Selman is new to being an AD, but he does have a lot of connections inside college football. I mean, this is a guy that comes from a legendary family. He worked with one of the best athletic directors in the country at Oklahoma. He's been in Power Five. He has connections. He's going to be able to have those connections. Can he sell Mississippi State and make the right hires is the key. And the Bulldogs have to make the right hire here. You, you've got to – uh, really connect uh, with somebody and give them a vision that Mississippi State can be bigger than what it has been because right now Mississippi State in this age of college football is kind of stale. They th- Nobody really uh, puts them in positive light inside uh, college football nationally. They need some juice. They need a guy that's going to come in here and bring some excitement. Give them an exciting offense. They really need an exciting offense. They need to recruit at a high level. They need to really push NIL and make this a place where kids can flourish. Um, And you do that, and Starkville grows, and Mississippi State grows, and you change the narrative about Mississippi State. Football can do a whole lot of things for a community and for a city, and Mississippi State needs it badly. They had it with Dan Mullen. This place has boomed uh, 10 years later um, since – you know, the 2014 season, I mean, Starkville has really grown. They need another push like that. This is the time. This is when you have to get things done if you're Mississippi State. And this is a huge hire for Zach Selman. Quite frankly, I don't think this is going to be, you know, his destination job. I think he's a guy that has bigger sights ahead of him. We said that whenever he was hired. I, I think that eventually he wants to be at Oklahoma or at a Blue Blood. To get there, he's going to have to make some big-time hires, and this is the one that is the biggest. Mississippi State has got to get some consistency with its program. they got to get a guy in here that's going to build a program and make Mississippi State sustainable again, and we'll see if they're able to do that. Bulldogs have a 14 or 13 straight bowl um, appearance record on the line these next two ball games. they got Southern Miss coming up on Saturday, and then they have Ole Miss. And you got to win both those games to get to a bowl. Greg Knox is taking over as the interim coach. He's 1-0 at Mississippi State. I think he's like 2-1 and one or something. I, f- I forget what he was at Florida. But, um, you know, he's done this before. I don't think it can get any worse for Mississippi State than what it has been. And as soon as I say that, it does. But, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm not sure what our situation is on Monday. We were supposed to talk to Zach Arnett at noon. I imagine we're probably going to talk to Zach Selman instead, but that might be called off. I don't know. We haven't gotten any word just yet. So we'll keep you updated on that. We'll have plenty of things to come on our site. Stay tuned over there on 247sports.com. Of course, we'll have coaching search information flying in. I imagine this is going to be a pretty swift uh, decision by Zach Selman. They're going to want to have a hire made probably a week, no later than a week or so after the, the regular season ends. I think Mississippi State will have a coach in the first week of December. So we're talking about less than a month. Things are going to heat up really quickly, so we'll see what happens. I appreciate you guys tuning in for this breaking news item. Uh, going to try to do a Talking Dogs tonight, too, so we'll, do, we'll try to do a live chat tonight where we discuss uh, coaching candidates, basketball, football, all things Mississippi State coming up for you later tonight. So 
come check it out on YouTube. We have plenty of things to talk about there. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you then.